first of all, welcome to Dates with Shin and Riri. Real man. The first official guest on yeah, our podcast. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Um, I except, just listened to it last week. Yeah. Or like during the week, man. It's yeah. Nice. Except uh, Riri's not here. Yep. <laughs> just saw her. She's uh, doing work in the kicked other room. Kicked her out. Kicked her out. Um, yeah, and I think the main goal for mm-hmm. us today is just to have a conversation uh, yeah. over what would be coffee, but we're going for water today. Yeah, water. Bang, right here. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah, so I think the idea is whoever's listening to this yep. is going to join in on our coffee conversation, getting to know you, getting to know me a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Most likely they're going to be our friends, maybe family if you send it yeah, to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe before we get started, you can tell us a little bit about who is Arnold. Oh, man. Um, born in Hong Kong. And I moved to Canada at a very young age. So I grew, I grew up in Calgary, which not many people, actually surprisingly, some people know about it. Yeah. I think over time, but grew up in Calgary um, for pretty much all my life. And yeah. I just moved here 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So I'm at a point now where Hong Kong's home. Yeah. But, but, but Calgary also is like a special place. Yeah. Like there's so many things I still remember about Calgary. Like a, a very, a lot, a, a big part of me is still like very Calgarian. It's like if, if I'm talking to someone from Calgary, like instantly I'm like, okay, like you know, like, yeah, we know. It's like okay, okay. you're definitely from yeah, there. I turn on the A's and like my words kind of yeah. twist a bit, but yeah, no, it's it's good. So ten years ago, you moved over to Hong Kong. Yeah. What was the reason? Um, for family, for work. Okay. So at that time, like, as you know, I was doing finance. So I, like, I definitely wanted to be in Asia. Like Hong Kong for finance to me was like the, like the center at that time and still is. Um, And I never really thought about like New York, London, like for some reason I always wanted to come to Hong Kong. Yeah. And back when I was living in Calgary, I would come back like for quite a few winters some summers yeah and ever since i think like all my friends back in calgary back then would go to like you know mexico hawaii or like europe like just cool places yeah but i'd always come keep coming back to hong kong because my family's here right but yeah i don't know i think coming back so much like i just love the city i love the food the skyline the atmosphere yeah and as time went on i just really felt it started coming into more about like the the opportunity and the amount of things you can do from Asia and the growth in Asia. So it was a no brainer for me. Yeah. And then I guess for you, so, so initially your work wasn't in fitness at all. No, like, was there a passion that was there on the side? Like what, where, where did fitness and all that come into play? And then how did that become sort of part of the journey that that is ongoing now for you? Fitness? Yeah, no, I, fitness started because going back to Canada, right? Like in elementary, very few well very few asian kids there was some like the the area that we grew up in in the suburbs like had had a decent amount but still overall back in like the early 90s it was was a bit less so uh, like i'd connect with a lot of friends and make a lot of friends through sports right so a lot of the popular white kids back in the day like i like, I wouldn't be like picked first by any means but like we would just hang out and i made a lot of friends playing sports right and then and then uh, wanted to get into like hockey and soccer okay. at the time. Yeah. But my mom said no, because uh, hockey was too dangerous apparently, yeah. and football no, and well, football soccer would make me short. So she made me play basketball. Oh wow! That's how I make you grow. What? It's I don't know. <laughs> where does this? Where I don't does know. This stereotype. Because they come think from? you jump more, but there's like short basketball players, man. Dude. Like, and so. And then so I, I started playing a lot of basketball. Yeah. And then like around junior high, there was the YMCA was like a popular spot. Okay. So I, I, I joined the YMCA with some friends. There was like these like teen nights on Friday. We started yeah. going and we started weight, lifting weights around like, I guess, 14, like grade seven, eight. Hang on. So yeah, you were allowed in the gyms at 14 years old. I was having a conversation with someone about yeah. this the other day yeah. and I was noticing that 14, 15, 16, like teenagers today yeah. 
are way bigger oh man than what i remember to be when i was 14 15 16 yeah and one of the biggest reasons is gyms in hong kong did not allow you in if you were under 18 and in some places under 16 oh really guardian and now that's all changed now it's all like you have access to all this information there's a lot more education behind i guess health and fitness and wellness and all that yeah for sure well social media had a huge part of that like that's a whole different topic and that's actually kind of why a good segue but um no maybe yeah maybe it was 16 then but i started wait wait how old were we in when we were 14 grade seven right uh grade wait because we were uk so we were doing it in years so whoever was grade seven we were like year six yeah roughly 13 14 15 and then high school was 16 17 18 yeah so No, I started lifting, like at least doing some push-ups and lifting weights around, I would say grade 8 then, grade 9. But yeah, maybe like legally it was 16. That doesn't ring a bell now that you say that. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, you had to go to the Y and like, you had to like do an orientation and get a shoe tag. Okay. And then put on your shoe and then and then do it. So right. all these memories, man. That's that's cool. Wow. Okay. So they train you. They'd say, okay, now nah, you're. They impressed. would just make you like you have to go through all the machines and yeah. just know the rules, and then you get the shoe tag. Okay. So I started lifting with a lot of friends like back then. Yeah. And that started to happen, yeah. right? And at the same time, I was always like, um, like pretty skinny, but I wasn't just skinny. Like I was near, like my bones are like small. Like my frame is small and uh, shout out to my mom. She would say, she always like bugged me about my shoulders. Like, oh, you're, you're you're so like skinny. Your shoulders are so narrow and all that. And then one day I was like, yo, like it's on. And (laughs) it was, that was, that was in the basement. This was grade eight for sure. I remember the t-shirt I was wearing. That's how specific that moment was. What t-shirt were you wearing? It was a navy blue Club Monaco sport t-shirt. It had CMX in volt green. Wow. Yeah. So and then after that day, I started working out like crazy. And then seriously, like that was my first run into like lifting hard. Okay. So was that was actually there. a very significant moment. That was. You. I look back and laugh. Like it's, it wasn't funny at the time, but but no, I'm, I'm very glad she made those comments. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. So it was ongoing. Mad. Yeah. Sounds like uh, there's a trend in Asian mom comments. Oh, so. uh, yeah, man. No, people go crazy, man. They take that seriously. Yeah, I bet you a lot of people are doing what they do because of their moms and dads' comments. Yeah, it's crazy. But I guess in that sense, like, so that became a positive mo- motivation for you. Very positive. Okay. Very positive. Yeah. Um, and then, and then after, when I started training a lot of my friends, like, no, sorry, I would train a lot too. And back then, like, you don't have like you know YouTube or anything. Yeah. So you had to buy these flex magazines from Superstore. <laughs> so I would be in the magazine aisle, like there'd be like flex and men's health. Yeah. And then there was an Arnold Schwarzenegger of one. Course. I think I still have it. He's like doing like this like crazy bicep curl, yeah. like just with a barbell. And I, I would at that time it would be mostly like bro science, right? Like bro science. Like what just, is that? Just bros. Like you kind of just go through, you know, talking with other bros, reading magazines, right. guessing, testing, like just bro science, and yeah. and you kind of. I like that. I've never heard of bro science, bro science. but I think that still that still exists. Oh yes, yes, you bro go on science. Instagram, tons of bro science. Tons of, bro science. There's good. bro science everywhere. I still use some bro <laughs> science. I it doesn't leave you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then really, once I started like training myself and starting seeing results, like it had a really big impact on myself. Yeah. But then when people kind of go, "Oh, let's train together," and they would ask me questions, I just felt this like crazy joy of telling someone, "Hey, look, th- try this. This works." And then when I see them improve, and then I got this like feeling, I'm like, whoa, that's really cool. Like this person's actually improving just because of something that I was sharing with them. Right. That was like the spark of actually wanting to do something uh, in the fitness industry at that point in time, like it, around like junior high, high school. That early. Oh wow. That okay. early. So that that was, I guess, like developed into somewhat of a passion. For sure. But you weren't necessarily considering it as a career or work at that point. I wanted to. Oh, interesting. I did. Okay, so I what were the conversations to. that you had to have with, I guess, like your parents or? or... It was short, man. Oh, really? It was short. It wasn't even a conversation. No, I. I wanted. I wanted no. No. <laughs> no. It's. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, I. I. I was wanting to kinesiology, actually, okay. and it was a short no, like no. Okay. And then it kind of turned into a. Um, 
And then back when, okay, me, when my dad was still here, we would have a lot of conversations about in the future how we can use fitness and education in Asia. This started roughly in high school, these conversations. Oh, wow. So he was thinking of, you know, I would just get an accounting degree, have like a business background while keeping like, you know, getting um, certified as a trainer, gaining knowledge and obviously working on my own health. At the same time, he he was doing a lot of like, um, you know, he was kind of doing a few other things on his own projects as well. And he was like translating and doing some English stuff too. So he wanted to do a kind of education fitness center in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. At some point in time. So we, we kind of had that playing. Yeah. But my mom, shout out again to my mom, she she was kind of like, just kind of more like, yo, be real. Right. And, and just focus on, you know, getting a good education, working hard, corporate, you know, make good money and you'll be comfortable. Like yeah. that's where the path she was taken. Yeah. Because um, I guess at that... At, our parents' generation, that's that was the norm that was actually the pathway towards, I guess, somewhat sure. secure lifestyle. Yes. In, in the sense that, you know, you work hard, get a qualification and that was your in. Yes. To be hired by I guess like yeah. an organization within your field, right? Yeah. But I guess now in the world that we're living in, it's it's so much more open to opportunity. Yes. Um, as soon as, like, I think we were talking about maybe a couple months ago in terms yeah. of, like, just how much power the internet has opened up opportunities. Like, even for me, I don't think I would have a video production business yeah. if I didn't have the internet. Yeah. Like, it just wouldn't be possible. Like, I wouldn't be able to go out and just go, like, hey, can I make videos for you? Like, or even just set up your own website so that people can actually come That's cool. and reach out and inquire like yeah. that just wasn't a possibility you know you weren't going to get like mail at the address that you lived in going like hey by the way can you do some uh, videos for yeah us? yeah <laughs> yeah no but like you and you would get a lot of business probably like online right i'm sure like all. people reach out but crazy i would say all right yeah. I, and we say online that 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 falls into whatsapp being a thing yeah um just email yes and, and you know just having that opportunity to very quickly build a business yeah. that is sustainable yeah um which i think brought about also a lot of pros and cons right like yep. you, it, i guess for us it brought about a lot of i guess less patient people mm -hmm. because we're so used to getting everything straight away and so as soon as we mm -hmm. try something like you know start a podcast in this example it, it takes us about a year to decide hey let's just go ahead and start yeah because we go into that whole inner mindset of well what's the point yeah right like what do i gain from this this is going to be like years down the line before anyone probably listens to this but yeah, maybe yeah, maybe yeah. to that one person who decides <laughs> who knows, man? oh you know what i'm gonna listen to this conversation between shit and arnold that's crazy you might get something out of it you know but you, but you were saying too like the fact that now you can just do things so fast yeah because when we were talking at dinner, what, like a couple of weeks ago, last week, yeah, you're like, yo, we do this podcast. I could just put it on in a week. And yeah. it's like, what? Like even your current, the dates with Shannon Ree, the one I listened to. Yeah. If I, if I didn't know, I would just would have thought it was just a professional podcast. You put on your photo, you got all your, your, it's a cool photo. You have the description and it just looks like so pro and it sounds good. And I just wouldn't have known. So, and the crazy thing yeah. is that was done on a whim, just for fun. Because, yeah, I, I think at that time it was like still in the middle of all the COVID, I guess restrictions yeah. that were a little bit more strict. Um, people weren't as comfortable maybe getting out the house and things like that. So yeah. we just looked for new ways to be creative. Um, and and Re had had put up this sticker on her Instagram and just basically asked questions. Uh, that people had around relationships that yeah. maybe they specifically wanted to ask yeah. her. And a lot of the questions became questions related directly to me and her. So it's kind of like, okay, well, those questions are obviously from friends or yeah. people who know us. So I just felt like if we recorded an answer, it would make a lot more sense in terms of giving a, an actual helpful answer to, to contextual contextualize i guess all the questions versus mm -hmm. just kind of doing like a quick sticker response of like 
yeah. you know, what are your thoughts on dating? Like, yeah. great. Yeah, like, great. <laughs> just like, Double tap heart. Heart, <laughs> thanks, moving yeah. on, and then that's the end. But yeah. it just goes to show that I think it's very natural for human beings to be curious yeah. about one another. And I think that was me, even with the podcast, is just kind of like following that curiosity and then realizing, oh, actually, it's not as difficult to get started. Mm-hmm. But getting yourself to the place to get started is actually mentally the hardest part. That is. So even hard. even this episode today, we were talking, again, as Arnold was saying, with, with our, uh, the last time we caught up, we're like, what, what if we just sat down and had a conversation and made episode two happen? And it would be Arnold's first experience of a podcast. Dude, and it would that's be crazy. My, my second episode. <laughs> But then I would just now like have that extra little bit more motivation to get oh, cool, the next man. one going and the next one going. Because I guess the vision yeah. at the end of the day, the, the reason why we call it Dates with Shin and Riri, the podcast is actually the, named after, I guess, a hashtag that had started way before when we were dating. Yeah, you had a lot of those actually. Right? And we only did that so that we can have an easy hashtag that Re and I could then link up to and then click on and whenever we all. wanted to see all our old photos. That's that was cool. the whole point of it. That's cool. But then I guess everyone else started jumping on and when they had photos with us, they would also hashtag Dates with Shinri, which was helpful because ah. it just meant that we can search the hashtag and all our photos would come up. Yeah. So that's also kind of trial and error in that sense back in a time when we didn't even understand hashtags. Yep. Right? Now at least we understand it, but now people are trying to gamify social media. Yeah. They're trying to gamify, I guess, how do I get eyes on this thing that I'm talking about? And I think for me, it's just like, I think that's a very normal challenge because you try and find certain metrics to then measure up against to then think, oh, am I doing well or not, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I think for me, this just bringing, bringing it back to what we're doing now is just kind of like, actually, what if we just put our head down, yeah. had these conversations, and then invited more of our friends to have these conversations yeah. with regard to the things that their, I guess, story and their interests kind yeah. of align with? And then it, I'm pretty sure other friends and other people who may or may not know us will get something out of it right see where it goes see where it goes yeah Yeah. without like that extra motivation of just like man if i don't if i don't get a thousand subscribers by the end of the month it's failure i'm like people get so caught up in that yeah and they care like you know i you made a really good point that that one dinner and i and i was thinking about it where it's like if you're creating content right let's just say your, your personal brand is either on like ig you know linkedin twitter youtube whatever yeah the thing you said about you know you're, you're just creating all this just to have a catalog of what you've done your content as like a legacy to even show your kids or to show the future people who are going to watch it later it's also similar to your your hashtag idea where you can always look back at it later it's if you don't get too caught up in like the likes and to get get caught up into like oh well people really listen or, or watch or like or whatever they do yeah but you're just doing it for yourself you're doing it for the people around you people you care about maybe yeah. the future people that are going to come after you yeah it's a different perspective so what you said i mean i i, I sat on that for like a couple weeks and i can't take credit for that because uh, a good friend of mine sam he he is the one who had shared an idea of yeah. what if we made a video that I guess was something that you would leave behind to your kids as they grew older. Yeah, that's cool. That they would understand when that's they cool. were older. And I'm like, that is fascinating because that can be applied to everything, right? Yeah, that changes the mindset. Because actually, I'm sure we've all made videos that were like, that even five years ago, I'm just like, what, what, what yeah. were we thinking? Why was Why are hair we like sharing that? this? Yeah. What is the point? Yeah. And, and again, that's not to then like, you know, poop on that or like yeah. make it kind of like, oh, retrospectively, that's a bad decision. But it, it does make you think it's like, oh, it, we do actually now have yeah. a power to leave meaningful messages. Yes. And I guess a trail of kind of like, this is who your parents were. Yeah. Or this is who your parents' friends were back mm-hmm. in the day. And this mm-hmm. is how we grew up. And this yeah. is what you can learn from us. And then this is what you just definitely should not copy yeah. this, you know? Well, there's, there's, um, like I, I was, cause 
two of my godsons who I watched grow up, I was telling uh, my wife Andrea that the fo- the amount of videos and photos they're gonna see versus the amount of videos and photos that I have of myself back then is just it's just a whole different like world. Yeah. They're gonna see everything. Yeah, like of how cool I was. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but no, we we talk and we talk about that where and now that they're getting a bit older, they're eight and six. Yeah, and so I you know we do some fitness videos together or like we shoot around. Yeah, playing basketball that they got like a mini Tesla. We'll drive around. And they actually like to look at it again and oh, show me this, show me that. And it's, right. it's just really cool. Um, I think that keeping a catalog or a record of all of this is like really special. Yeah. And even from a fitness point of view, though, yeah. going back to that is yeah. when I get into ruts of, you know, falling off the wagon, whether it's, you know, motivation might slide or you're on a vacation and like you kind of, you know, fall off the wagon. Yeah. Or, or whatever reason it is, and, and you look back at a, at a photo, you're like, wow, like, you know, not just aesthetically, like, I looked like that before. Yeah. But that's actually possible, and you, you remember how you felt at that time, or what you were doing at that time, and it, yeah. it gives you, like, this, like, special feeling. Yeah. And it can help propel you back into the, you know, future. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. That is, that is super interesting, because I guess in the past, it would be more something like, a song would trigger a memory yeah, yeah. or you know maybe you watched a certain movie at a certain yes difficult or meaningful period in your yes. life and it triggers all those memories but now you actually can revisit and watch exactly what you used to do and then literally yeah. rewatch and rewatch yes and i guess like it, yes. that, that also brings about the question of just kind of like the pros and cons between um what it is that you you deem is important to share yeah and i guess learning how to filter because it's like here's the thing that i i i hear quite often it's like Mm. if you're sharing it on instagram or on social media Mm -hmm. is it for you or is it for someone else Mm. and that's like it's a really challenging question because i i can see the utility of being able to create content even like you could argue us recording this podcast so that we can share it with others is it for us or is it for others and there's this whole kind of conversation around what is the value that you're offering to someone who's listening to this Mm -hmm. or if it in the case of an instagram video what is the value of recording like a workout video yeah or you know and I, I, again, I'll share from my perspective. When I see your videos, it just makes me go, "I'm gonna do ten push-ups." Right <laughs> Most of my videos are push-up videos. Gonna, yeah, <laughs> while you're hanging in the air like a flagpole. Oh man, no, it's crazy. But yeah. I guess do you do you have a perspective no. when it comes to? And I guess we'll go back to also just your yeah. origin story and how you got here. But just while mm-hmm. we're on this this subject matter, yeah. it's like, do you have a perspective when it comes to like? posting and and creating content and all that yeah i i do i mean i i think ultimately the whole point even a step back from instagram like why i'm even wanting to do this at all is really to really help people get fit it's a very high level blanket statement but but just getting fit right whether it's like physical uh, mental, like it could just trickle all the way down your life, right? So that I always keep in mind. So helping people get fit because that's like I was sharing, like I actually got that first hit of joy when I was watching people improve on something I can help with. And so that's kind of the base. And at, while at the same time, just trying to be myself because you can get really caught up in social media like we we shared before too right like in the fitness scene there's tons of accounts with like really glistening yeah shredded yeah shirtless people like me exactly (laughs) thank you for not taking off your shirt though because otherwise i'm out of business (laughs) but i'm in the stick category of those fitness influencers (laughs) I saw you. I saw you work out. You work out hard. You work out hard. Man. You work out hard. Yeah, you work out hard. It's 
but um, so I think I think for a lot of things I post is like if if I were to just keep competing with with you know try to get more attention, it just never ends though. Yeah. So I just think to myself, look, like if people look at this or not, okay. But if it does whatever I post, if it actually helps someone, yeah, dude, that's that's my win, yeah. right? And I had some funny comments when I restarted when I rebooted my current account. Yeah. Um, I had some comments saying like, dude, people can't do what you're doing. Like these flying push-ups and jumping all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It, it's a combo because I, I wanted to, that wasn't just to purely be like, look what I can do. And yeah. also in my opinion, like it just gets people like kind of, whoa, what that's okay. Get yeah. their attention a bit and yeah. start thinking about like, can I do that? Like, can I ever do that? And then they can start really trickling down. Yeah. And I also post some things that are a bit, that are more like, you know, foundational and and you can do it. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm to be honest, man, I'm still posting whatever. Yeah. I'm just seeing what people. How do you decide? How do you decide, I guess, like on a daily when you do posts, is it more, is your mindset more towards the consistency of sharing something or do you have, do you kind of go on feeling on that? Right now, man, it's just so early still on feeling. Okay. Like I, my, my wall is like, pretty all over the place yeah but i think for stories though i do want to at least provide you know a short clip a day yeah on some sort of workout whether i'm doing it yeah or someone i'm working out with is doing it so just keep that going right yeah man Rhea and i were talking about um because you know how i guess for for her go-to workout video she does like all the pop sugar fitness like like, the group workouts (laughs) and they're like always doing like hour long like insane like the whole group's like super fit it's like oh man like if you're not as fit as our, us you can follow you know karen over there she no does, they like, say the, that the regressed like <laughs> okay, version okay. <laughs> but we're like oh, karen. we were saying dude you should do a series where you just get your friends who are all like different levels of fitness like mostly super unfit compared to you do a workout and just let let the I guess like the chips drop where they drop. So it's like five minutes in, it's like you're encouraging whoever's working out from home going like, okay, it's not just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Like Like those mornings are like, (laughs) like five minutes in. You're happy Valley where you're like getting us to sprint, like do these crazy, like quick fire drills. Survival of the fittest. People start dropping off. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like if you just created a series in the midst of all that and then just be like just call it like look let's just call it what it is yeah let's work hard. survival of survival. Fitness. I don't know. <laughs> darwin fitness and then dude just... i think that would be so funny just to follow. that would get competitive right like you follow it along and you'll be like yo this is yeah yeah these guys Ooh, aren't trying to be like amazing it's like these guys have got like fine film me this is how i do yeah my exactly <laughs> as raw as possible that's pretty funny i think it would just do like as a it might start as a parody and yeah. it might end up being a series, you know? Yeah. Like, like kind of be like, oh, like, oh, I, I finally beat Karen today, you know, yeah. or whatever. Like, so-and-so. I'm, I'm doing these jump lunges now. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. That's we funny, should, man. We should try and plan that. We'll, we'll make... Yeah, we'll Dar- make, we'll Darwin make a, Fit. We'll make a day. <laughs> Darwin Survival of the, the Fittest, day, man. man. Yeah. Oh, Survival man. of the Fittest. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It'd be fun. It would be fun. I just... I feel like you'd also be really good at leading... leading. I mean... Because we had we had a year when you and I first met where yep. it started with yeah. just like an invitation. You were just like, "Hey, oh, yeah, you know, um, your then girlfriend and you were saying like, oh, we want to kind of just get something going.' Yeah, just then girlfriend, which is now wife, which is yeah. now wife. exactly. <laughs> um, let's yeah, let's that. Just clarify <laughs> that. Yeah, no other girlfriend. Yeah, no other girl. Yeah, um, and then it just weirdly took off. Because all it, all we did was start, and I think I learned so much actually from that year. Because I definitely am not someone who decides to do extra early morning workouts. Like I won't wake yeah. up for anything other than surfing. Yeah, right? yeah, that's your thing. Though. And so when we would, you say, "Yo, we're gonna meet at six forty-five." Yes. Like yeah, every we're Wednesday. Yeah. And the fact that when we started doing it one by one, our friends would be like, "Yo, can we join you?" Yeah was just super fascinating yeah i think okay actually that's when we first did it you took me andrea and uh, another friend eric if you remember yes and because i was training with him a lot yeah and 
then you were yeah as we got kind of like closer you're like hey why don't you come to like a football field to work out at, at the at the club and then i was like what are you what, like what is that and that was actually a bucket list of mine like oh, that's no what's way. on my that's the kind of stuff on my bucket list because i would love back in the day watching like youtube uh clips of people like in, a, in their own stadium or field. Wow. Because they would have access to that, like somewhere in the U.S., right? Like a yeah. huge like, football field. Yeah. And they would like lay out a, a speed ladder. Oh, no And way. they would do like drills and cones and sprints and plyo. Yeah. And then you fulfilled that. Oh, so awesome. I was like, I was like, man, like this is a bucket list. Yeah. It was like 6.45 in the morning. Um, the sun was like rising. It was like a bit chilly out. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is it. Like, you know, and then like you said, we just started training. Yeah. And people just started coming. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. And I also got to be probably one of the fittest that I've been in that. Because yeah, I would also... Hard. That was my other thing, right? Because I would have football training the night before. Yes. And that's what made it even harder. And then I was yeah. kind of like, this. if this could be like a day after, it might have been no, you were intense. better. But I think... Yeah, just I think... I think for me at that time, I was learning. I guess at that time, you had your arms fitness movement. Yeah, yeah. Is that how you would say it? I, I guess so, yeah. V- V1, yeah, the arms fitness movement was the very first one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that, because you said when you first came over, you weren't working in that industry. How did you make the jump the oh, yeah. first time? And then, I guess, what's the journey so far? Yeah, um, so yeah, I came, so I moved here in 2012, purely for finance. And at that time, you know, I mean, it, still had a good time like coming to Hong Kong and then you know that current job I was just traveling to like all the mega cities within Asia um, um, just enjoying like wherever I was like the cultures the hotels the eating it was it was really good but then <clears throat> as I was like working and working I started thinking like you know is this something I, I want to be doing forever and I think what triggered that if I can remember was well probably because i mean i give my hats off people that that even though they don't enjoy their job they'll still do it Mm. but maybe what's built in me was a few things where i'm like maybe i was built for something where i wanted to do my own thing at some point in time yeah and so i started having that feeling uh fitness was always a passion so you know that what, what i used to do was pretty tough but then I, as when I moved to Hong Kong and got things sorted, I started training again. So my, I kind of got back into that, that deep passion even more. Right. And then for th- the third point, like we talked about in 2012, Instagram was very early in Hong Kong. Yes. Very I don't early. Think I even had it. Yeah. 2012, I didn't have it. You know, like back friends back home, I, I was a Blackberry guy. I, I never wanted an iPhone. Like yeah. that's so embarrassing to even say. Yeah. Like, never want. I'm resisted. like, I need buttons. Resist it till the end. I yeah. know. Like, and, and what the, is this no screen, like no, no button thing? Yeah. And yeah. the WhatsApp was so messy. Yeah, I didn't even know what that was. Yeah, because BlackBerry, because <laughs> BlackBerry was so organized. SMS, bro. <laughs> Dude, yeah, SMS as text well. Text me. Text. But don't text me if you're in a different carrier, because that would charge you gotta me pay. extra. <laughs> yeah, man. People were like, just don't respond. Dude. No, but did you did you get charged for receiving? Only I'm, if you sent. I'm pretty sure depending on the plan and Dude. I guess like the contract terms kept changing. I just remember when we were in school, like it cost us to jump on the phone. It cost yeah, us yeah. to own a, own a, you know, like own a mobile phone and then try and jump on calls the air with, time, with the your air, friends and yes. your crushes and things like that, whatever it is. <laughs> the airtime packages and right. Yeah. They package it as if it's like such a great deal, and it's like your thousand minutes is up. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna How charge you a hundred dollars per extra minute. You're like, what? Yeah. I don't have that money. And then your parents start like, "What is this bill? I'm sorry." Yeah, these huge phone bills and get yelled dollars. at. Yes, yes. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, sorry. So go no, back wait, to what wait. you say about Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault. My fault. No, no. Yeah. Um, so it wasn't. So, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't, about, it wasn't yeah. popular. But then, um. Yeah, and then for some reason, yeah, oh man, a few few thoughts were going through my head because um, I noticed that a couple things were happening. Like, fitness was growing in Hong Kong because I would come back during like winters and summers, and notably in high school when I got like bigger, 
relatively in my head, in my mind, I was like pretty as big as I ever got. Yeah. And I came to Hong Kong and I went to California Fitness like one time. Yeah. And it was like so expensive. I'm like, who pays like, how much was it? Like almost 200 bucks drop in, which isn't that bad, but drop for Canadian in. standards. No, I think I paid like. California was like eight, nine hundred a month. For dro- no, for like a one time drop in fee it was like 250, no? But for, anyway, when I converted to Canadian, yeah. I was like, that's, that's like a month's membership. Right. So I went in there and I noticed that, you know, the, the people in the gym were like a bit behind or even on the streets, like no one was really like fit. Right. Yeah. Or like, I guess like lifted weights, I should say. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm like, well, there's something happening here. Like, I think not fitness is going to grow yeah. in Asia, but also like, I think social media is just the beginning and it's going to be, you know. A big a big part yeah so i had to get over the hump one time i just took a photo and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna post it and yeah. make it public it was the weirdest thing ever your first your first fitness photo yeah ever and yeah. i i it was just weird but once you kind of post it you lose all shame and i just keep posting a bunch of stuff <laughs> i'm like you know what <laughs> just keep posting yes, it no one was looking just do it <laughs> and then and then i and then same thing with you i i wanted to just try a hashtag i was learning what even a hashtag was so it was it was hk fitness so i i did hk fitness and when i clicked back on the tag to see hey who's tagging it that i think it was like i I don't even remember it wasn't that many like in the hundreds yeah i mean you click on it now i I don't know it's probably like like millions you know lots right so anyway that's when i thought to myself like you know if there's any time to do it though yeah it's probably now yeah so I just took the leap and I did it. Right. And this was, so you said this is the second time coming back. So from that, that moment. Yeah. And I guess, I don't know if you want to go into uncovering things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like at that point I was, I was super pumped. So I was, Arms Fitness Movement was the name of the initial platform, AFM. Yeah. And I was just like. You know, at that time, I think I was just, as I was sharing with you, just super excited. Like, imagine working in corporate, coming right out of school, and then finally being let free. Like, yeah. there was just so much. I had just way too much excitement. So yeah. I was doing AFM, yeah. you know, doing, like, free sessions and, like, inadvertently building, like, a, a cool community of people who I'm still friends with to this day. Yeah, um, You're basically, like, the original... Hong Kong fitness uh, I don't know, no, like no. in in that crew right because like those guys like there's some in that that I guess that had started in a similar time and just carried on yeah they kept going yeah, yeah. like definitely I would say not the or like I was one of the OGs but I wasn't by no means like you know the first but yeah. one thing for sure is when I worked out at Tamar Park yes you know that the the outdoor space the outdoor space yeah. like the waterfront space yeah. and like now you like I took photos there and did training and I had a, a friend that took amazing photos for me and he was just like doing it just straight up yeah. for free for fun. Yeah. And a lot of the videos and photos were at Tamar Park. Yeah. Now when you go to Tamar Park, it's just covered with fitness things. So it's just it's just cool to see that though. Yeah. That and now you'll if you look online, people are, you know, also posting in that area. Yeah. It's just it was just it was inevitable. Yeah. It was going to happen. It's just a, a great space. And yeah. People got to use it. Yeah. And I think more spaces in Hong Kong need to be utilized for, for fitness. Yeah. Um, That's great. So you actually can see just how much has, I guess, evolved yeah. since 2012 yeah. with this outdoor fitness movement, things like that. That's right. And then I guess like, yeah, so, so you were saying, so, so that was taking off, um, you know, you were, I guess, all in. I remember you sharing also. Mm-hmm. Like you have such a passion for just like education towards like the youth as well. So you would go into schools and yeah, like yeah. underprivileged environments yeah. where where you would host sessions and things yeah. like that. Yeah, that's right. For them. And, and yeah. you just love that. I remember. Um, but I, I remember there's also is kind of there's an overlap between, I guess, like your startup business. Yeah. At that yeah. Time. Well, I think like. It really, okay, it all started when, um, for AFM, yeah. for the fitness platform, I wanted just to make t-shirts. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's as, as straight up as that. And yeah. a friend of mine at the time had a factory. Right. And then even before creating the, the Uncover, the men's subscription uh, platform, yeah. we were already creating apparel for startups. Right. So we were doing that first and it went pretty well. Yeah. 
and this is going back to just my excitement was I was, you know, doing AFM, but then this, this apparel thing came up yeah, and then it evolved into like an uncover situation and then it just got diluted like pretty crazily. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, so I guess you started getting a lot more mm-hmm. things on your plate. Yeah. Um, and then I guess for you, it's just like as awesome as that season was, mm-hmm. then COVID hit. Yeah, well, I right before that though, near the end of my my I guess my stint number one. Yes. Uh, Andrew and I got married. Oh, of course, yes, of yes, course. yes. So when we got married, because we were working on that together, yes. me, Andrew, and the partner. Yeah. And so once we got married, you know, we just thought, okay, like, what's the next phase? Because the company was growing, just not where we wanted to be. Yeah. And so, and plus working together was was quite a challenge at times yeah. that's a whole different conversation and ne- episode two <laughs> episode yeah episode three, two, three four, <laughs> four five, five to be continued <laughs> season two Ongoing. season three so um so we just decided look like let's just let's just um kind of reset yeah see what's going on yeah. newlyweds let's let's go yeah and so she went off to join um you know a uh her own a, a, a startup yeah and i went actually i went back to corporate right and then COVID hit Ah, okay. So, yes. so what were some of the challenges, I guess, that came out of that place? And, and how did you then have to adjust, I guess, mindsets and, and lifestyle in that way? Oh, back to corporate? Yeah. Just, yeah. I guess, like yeah. that season, right? Because I think now yeah. we're recording this January, like beginning of January 2022. Yeah. And it's still, realistically, it's only been like... Dude, it's been two and a bit years since... Yeah. It feels like a lifetime has happened since. Yeah. But... That was a crazy time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was good. I think, you know, when I when I look back at that experience, I, the, 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 the one word that pops up in my head is it's just, it's a blessing. Mm. Right? Like, extremely grateful for that opportunity at that specific time as well. Yeah. So, I mean, timing is just so is everything yeah so super blessed um and grateful for that because it was just the provision that allowed us to you know continue to build on our household on our early marriage yeah up until now yeah and even you know the people that i was working with and met at that time yeah i mean amazing to meet them i'm still in touch with uh quite a few of them yeah um but you know it's uh, same thing it's just a different different reason and a different season yeah, it's, it's that time again where, you know, <laughs> I joke about it, but I, after going into corporate and leaving again, yeah, I, I now know I'm I, you're not going back to corporate. Just, I mean, that's, it's like you needed to go back just to just to make sure, just to make sure. And I'm like, yeah, nope. that's why I left. The, yeah, that's why this you know. Like and I'm my like, core motivation exactly. Yeah. One a.m. and I'm like on Excel. That's why. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I guess now that you're you're fully back in this space, yeah. um, I'd love to talk to you about maybe some of your thoughts when it comes to, um, I guess, training mm-hmm. and a little bit about maybe what it means to take care of your mental well-being as well. Oh. In that yeah. space. Yeah. Just And maybe a bit of eating as well. Cause also I, just I, basically fitness and health, wellness yeah, yeah, in yeah. general? Yeah, just kind of like what are your yeah. sort of like core... Mm principles that you try and share with people like yeah. say if someone yeah. is like a total um can i say noob yeah yeah when it sure, comes to fitness, yeah like just, yeah you, you don't you don't really consider these things or i think generically most people feel like health and well-being is important yeah. exercise is important yeah but what do you do with that very important man yeah it's very like you know i fitness for me like you said it is it is physical and mental it always has been but but i think mental health has has been like forefront in the in the recent times but how it's both you yeah. need both and you know during and it's important to say that because during all that path i told you whether yeah. it was through my corporate days to my entrepreneurial struggles to like it, well, it's back to corporate struggles and all that yeah fitness actually is always been that constant right i mean yes there's times where i like kind of 
stopped working out for a bit, but fitness was always playing in the background. Like yeah. it's the foundation for me. Yeah. And it's where I get, you know, it's, it stabilizes me. It, it gets my mind right. But at the same time, it brings a lot of ideas to my head. So yeah. that's just the importance for me at a high level. Yeah. But for anyone that anyone I talk to and currently work with, yeah. the key thing is um, setting up the foundation. What like, is that? Mm. For example, like building a house, mm. right? You're, gonna, you're not going to build it on quicksand, right? You're going to mm. build it on, on, a, on a rock, a solid, solid foundation that you just can't, you can't break. Yeah. And because if you, if you get caught up in all this um, fads and, and you're doing fitness for the wrong reason, that's quicksand, like real quicksand. Yeah. You're going to get buried. Yeah. And it's not going to last. Right. So the main things are um, just the basics, the low hanging fruit. Yeah. So even by changing a few of these things, like the people that I've been training with just like dropped a lot of weight. So that's really as simple as eight hours of sleep. I know that's hard to get, right? I'm, that's the target. Yeah. Eight hours of sleep, um, eight glasses of water a day. Mm a balanced diet and we can get into that but that's like a loaded comment a balanced yes. diet and then those are the main parts and then you got to supplement a little bit of you know get your heart pumping so cardiovascular yeah and muscle resistance if you can kind of combine weights. all that weights yeah or even starting with body is fine yeah but the key is even really before training yeah sleep water nutrition interesting the key yeah. If you can, if you can make those adjustments first, those are the low hanging fruits. Yeah. You know, and you'll start seeing even results quick, and you'll start feeling better, and then all these life decisions will actually cascade. Yeah. It, it, it's weird like that, but yeah. it, it always works. Yeah. Until you, you just got to do it. So prioritizing those three things yes. before even trying to go into like a crazy exercise program. Don't or exactly. Like that. Okay. Exactly. Like you can. You can get bom- you can get bombed these days with like, okay, like even to the extent of like fitness clothes, apps, workout styles. Yeah. What gym should I go to? Yeah. Uh, how long? How many days? Oh, like what muscles do I combine? Like you know, yeah, that's the wrong stuff for now. Like you yeah. sh- you gotta go back to like, why am I not getting enough sleep? How can I get enough sleep? Because if you sleep Start well, there. you burn a lot of fat when you're sleeping, and your body's healing. You you uh-huh. gotta sleep. Um, you're our body's majority water, right? So you've got to hydrate. Yeah. You move the nutrients, you've got to hydrate hard. Yeah. And then you got to eat well. Yeah. Because I know it's cliche, but you can't out-train a bad diet. You can't out-train a bad diet. A bad diet. Like, I eat a lot of cake. I love desserts. Mm. And I know that just by, you know, training hard might not necessarily do it. So I got to limit what I'm eating too. Yeah. And I, I've got to keep training. So right. I, I don't take that for granted. So anyway, those are the main things first. Yeah. And then you get into training. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's dive in a little bit on a balanced diet. Like, yeah. I think we hear that very, very often. Yeah. And a lot of people have maybe very mixed ideas on what yes. a balanced diet is. Yes. Can you maybe share from the perspective of someone who's just like has no idea? What, yeah. what is something that I should just like on a very practical level be considering for yes. my breakfast, lunch, and dinner yeah. to have a balanced diet? Yeah. No, that, that's a really good question. Like I, the, the, the first thought is you need to eat enough mm. as a balanced diet because when I ask people like, how's your diet, right? And diet not being like, like any fad diet, like just the term diet, like how are you eating? Just tell me on a daily basis. You know, they're either they're trying to lose weight or gain weight. They're like, but I can't. I'm like, what, what are you eating? Like, how are you eating? Let's mm. just say if you're trying to lose weight, like tell me your diet. And they go, yeah, but I eat really clean. Mm. That's like probably 90% of the, the feedback I get. They say I eat really clean. And then right away I'm like, okay. Like clean doesn't mean anything right. at the moment because – well, it's great that you're not eating chips and ice cream and whatever, but yeah. clean itself doesn't say much because it, it, you're under eating, I guarantee you. Right. Because they go, well, I don't, I don't eat carbs, right? And I just, I eat like a lot of um, veggie and I eat like, you know, meat with no skin, like that, which is good, but that's clean. Yeah. Because they think carbs are bad. Yeah. But a balanced diet is actually, picture a pie. Yeah. 
you need to eat the amount of calories that's good for you, right? So you have a resting caloric uh, intake daily. So mm. do I. And it's very different, right? All of us is different. Mm. So once you have that pie of how much you have to eat, there's three colors of the pie, which are macronutrients. There's protein, yeah. carbs, fat. That's it. And the micronutrients are like your your minerals and, you know, that sort of stuff, right? But yeah. vitamins and minerals. So yeah. when it comes to a balanced diet, there's a proportion, just picture that pie yeah. of say, you know, 30, 40, 40. Right. Meaning just, for example, 30 grams of um, fat, 40 grams of, oh, no, sorry, 40% of um, protein, yeah. 40% of carbs, 30% yeah. of fat. Yeah. As just like, very basic yeah so you need to be eating that first okay okay that's a balanced diet right first before if you and if you want to lose weight there's two things you can do you can either drop your caloric intake yeah by say 500 calories a day yeah right which is if you times that by seven days a week that's 3,500 calories burnt that's roughly a pound gone roughly okay. Okay. That's like that's bro science, right? Yeah. But it's not linear. It's it's very it's on a linear graph. But and then not only do you decrease what you're eating, you just change up the components of that the pie chart. Mm. But you still need carbs to burn fat. Mm. But you need protein to repair muscles and you need fats to balance your hormones. So no matter what, you need to always have fats, proteins, and carbs. Always at, at some percentage within your pie chart, depending Absolutely. on how you're built. How you're built and yeah. what your goals are and where you are right. so one one common like i guess visual i always use with people is picture like a furnace right okay. you, you want to be like a perpetual fat burning machine you want to be a furnace okay if you're if you're sleeping okay again table stakes yes sleep water okay if you're if you're if you got that on lock yeah and let's just say you're training three times a week and you're eating your right amount of calories yeah What's going to happen is your fu your, the furnace, the, the fire in the furnace is going to be burning nice, right? And you want that. Yeah. So you're in this groove. You're not gaining weight. You're not losing weight. You're yeah. just in this beautiful spot. Yeah. You're training well. You're feeling good. Everything is working. So that's when you see these like fit and lean people and they start going like, oh, that's not fair. He's like genetically gifted or he's born like that. Well, also they work hard. Yeah. You know how hard it is to like. Like one hour in the gym, you got 23 hours outside of the gym. Like yeah. that person probably works really hard. Yeah. Like of course there's people that are like naturally six pack, but a lot of people have to work hard. Yeah. To the point that they got their furnace fl flaming, Yeah. they can like eat a pizza, eat a cake, eat a donut. Right. It's like throwing a sheet of paper in that fire, it'll like disintegrate. Right. Right? But the problem is people that want to lose weight quick, they look to fad diets by just cutting out carbs. And this is where the clean thing comes when I hear clean. It doesn't, they... doesn't actually make sense at that point. No, it doesn't. Right. Because, look, if you want to lose weight, just cut carbs. I like, hear that a lot. Plain and simple. Yeah. Oh, man, you can shed. Like, So a lot of fad diets will cut your carbs so hard yeah. that you're going to just like burn fat like crazy. Right. right. Which is good. Like You step on the scale like, wow, like I'm losing so much weight. But the problem is your metabolic rate slows or your metabolism slows right. because you need carbs as energy to burn the fire in the furnace. So it's almost like your furnace is like becomes embers. on a low... Okay. Just so it's embers. Kind of, oh, interesting. Right? So you throw in more stuff, it just doesn't burn. Right? Interesting. So what happens is like if someone's losing weight like crazy, they're feeling good. Wow, I cut carbs. It works. It works. Yeah. But the problem is they lose like 15, 20 pounds their furnace becomes embers, the fire stops, right? What happens is they'll either go get really frustrated. This is where mental health kicks in. Yes. They go, oh man, like I need to eat less now. Like how much cleaner can I have? I got to eat less or I have to train more. Right. I got to run more because I got to burn more fat, but you're, you're crashing your metabolism even more at that point. Wow. Because you're using too much energy and you're eating worse. You're digging yourself into a deeper hole. Yeah. And that's when typically when I have conversations with people and I'm like, that's probably what's happening if you're not, if you're, so some guy, Alan, who I yeah. recently worked out with, we just figured out, okay, like a great guy, not some guy, great guy. Sorry. 
<laughs> amazing guy. Um, crazy hard worker. Yes, like he's crazy. I saw. Man. Yeah. And so all we did was we figured out his maintenance calories. Yeah. Right. And you can get maintenance can use... calories is kind of just like what you burn when you're not just to just to keep what you're at. Hundred percent. Right. But and, and there's apps you can download. Just go on a website. This yeah. is not like you know yeah unattainable yeah age weight height and um how much you expend your workouts a week okay and then it comes out with uh like shins um, um you know daily expenditure arnold's daily expenditure right and then once we figure out your expenditure right well let's use alan as an example yeah i actually had him not i didn't really care what, where he was at in his diet i just wanted him to come back to this center Right. I want you to eat this because we know based on all your stats, like just, just hang out here. Yeah. Right. So I remember like he started eating more yeah. and in the, like, it was crazy. Like he's a big dude. He's a big guy too. He's yeah. like six feet. Like he started at, at like, what was it? 208. Yeah. He had a lot of weight to lose, but I think he lost like five, seven pounds, like in the first week or two, just because things were just calibrating i remember him saying also he was surprised that he was actually eating more that's right because he, was, he yeah. told me he was eating clean and when i explained, yeah but he's got to eat that pie once he ate that pie and it's it's like it's weird it's very counterintuitive but yeah. i told him just stick with it and yeah. he was all good he's like yeah i'm, I'm just gonna do like, it yes i get to eat more i get Sweet. to eat more yeah right and he's like i'll just do it and yes there were times where like you know weight stalled up and down up and down but we just slowly tapered off yeah into the right amount that he should be eating and yeah. that's when he dropped down he lost like in three months he lost 17 pounds yeah but he looks full yeah. like i mean like muscle wise he looks full yeah and all of the exercises he was lifting more than he ever has and i know he has even more to do yes so after that um the three-month program i said keep everything the same as you're doing yeah just keep at it and until Right now, his body is a furnace. So if he wants to, like, for some reason, build a lot of muscle, he's got to flick the switch, eat a little bit more. He'll gain weight. Or if he wants to, like, cut again, beach season's coming. He mm. can, like, just make that adjustment and he'll cut. Man, so that got visual him. of the furnace is is very, very helpful, actually. Yeah. I think it's I've key. never really had anyone explain it yeah. in the way that you just explained it. So next time someone tells you, "Oh, I eat really clean," you're gonna get, you're just gonna get. What's in your yeah, pie, exactly. bro? Exactly. <laughs> you're, like, you're be like, "What does that even mean?" Yeah. Yeah, you're under eating. Nah. Because it always sounds good, right? Like when someone says, "Hey, I'm eating clean. I'm not eating trashy food," yeah. and I, I think I'm definitely guilty of that as well. But I too. also, I also don't think I care enough. Yeah. About what I'm eating because I don't feel the effects yet. But I think as you get older, you will feel it. And it's sure. just like, I think, you know, with injuries and things like that, that yeah. happen depending on the sport that you play. And sometimes it's just getting out of bed. You go, okay, yeah. you might just need to start thinking of these little adjustments, yeah. starting from sleep, drinking water, yeah. eating that balanced diet, as you, you put it, you know. And I, even for me, having this conversation with you now yeah. makes me go, right, I don't know when our football season is going to kick back in to yeah. normal you know, and it might just mean that I got to get these things right if I'm going to continue being physically right fit and well. Right? Yeah. Well, well, even for you, like you came off of a pretty intense injury, right? Like what yeah. was your process like rehabilitating and, and how did, I guess, even sleep, water and nutrition like fit in in that I mean, recovery process? Because for me, it was the second time I had torn my ACL and unlike you, I had never been in the gym. Okay. Like I've never really, you know. I know you probably can't tell, but uh, <laughs> shredded, shredded, yeah, Jack. Um, yeah, because yeah, I, I think I'm more kind of under the mentality of I already train with my team and play a game twice a week, yeah. um, and then I might run. I'll I'll run again. The habit I, I think more so recently, but I I hate running. Like I just find it really boring. Right. Um, I'll run with a purpose, but running just for just fun for fun is not. I'm not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, but I'm embracing it, right? Yeah. Um, and then I think, yeah, just kind of like getting into that place of of enjoying the reco like. So your question is like, how did I get to a place of recovery? Yeah, yeah. And my my process, I didn't have one. Like, hmm. 
the first time I started realizing the importance of training towards goals yeah. was actually through even the hospital rehab. And mm -hmm. again, I, I did my surgery in a public hospital, which was great because it was just super cheap. Um, but they only rehab you to a level in which that they deem acceptable because their mm. goal is just to get you back walking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not back to playing just competitive the machine, sport. Just get you in and out. Yeah, and again, they're dealing with, like, it's actually fascinating to me that yeah. ACL is such a common injury. Like, I would go into the re rehab room and it's just like, you all tore me? <laughs> like, it was, it's it crazy, was unbelievable. Man. Wow. And, you know, I'd have conversations with some, like, I made some yep. friends during the rehab time because we'd go in and, you know, you'd see each other week after yeah. week and you're doing like the same exercises um but they never spoke about food hmm. they never talked to me about what i should be eating they no. never even mentioned kind of they just like hey do these rehab exercises yeah and then see you next week okay and even when it comes to training and you know like even now as i, yeah. I play competitive sports I don't think I'm at the level where I consider it or give it enough respect Got it. in order for me to then see real benefits. Right. Got and it, and I guess for me, just I'm, I'm inspired by having this conversation because it's like, oh, wow. If if you're saying I can start with the sleep and yep. the drinking water yep. and then just reviewing what I'm eating to fill, I guess, those three areas of a pie chart. Yep. Suddenly I have something to work <clears throat> with. I'm not thinking about eating clean like oh i can cut mcdonald's wait uh i don't eat pizza and yeah. it's just like, and then suddenly like you said the mental stress of like oh i'm not allowed to eat this i can't yeah, eat no, that no, no. and now there's no joy in life because i can't eat anything that i thought i could eat yep you know and that's like the worst place to be right so yeah for me i just i think i i definitely was way less aware and educated in the importance of what you're eating side of training yes it's more just like oh just do do some training get motivated if yeah. you struggle to 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 train like don't get if you can't get to the gym start with 10 push-ups a day like right. i'm very much under that mindset so if i feel like right. oh kind of groggy and yeah. and i don't feel very you know like fit or i haven't been exercising yep. as often as i feel like i should be and like i said if i see an arnold video pop up I'm like, <laughs> 10 push-ups even if i'm just editing in the middle of the day 10 push-ups i'm gonna right keep now. posting it then, 20 man. squats like let's go like yeah. if i can get my brain into a mentality of like hey 10 is better than zero yeah then i feel like at least i'm doing that yeah than beating myself up for not doing yes. anything because i think it's way too easy to get to that place of just being like oh man Ah, uh, the gyms are closed. <laughs> Dude, it's very, it's very, and it, I was thinking of, 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 of thinking of like, you know, uh, a separate piece or whatever of content of like how to not even avoid the rut, but how to get out of one. Right. Because I had that conversation with my cousin just actually this weekend because mm. she's like, you know, busy, like building her business, two kids, like all this stuff going on. And, yeah. you know, she was pretty into doing like home workouts and like we had a short conversation about it. Like all I said was, you know, just do go back to something that you just love doing real quick. Like an exercise I mean, yeah. Or anything yeah. like the easy stuff. Don't dread over like making it overly complicated. Like, Oh, um, where, or like, what am I going to wear? Or like what workout am I going to do? Or what music am I going to listen to? Like for me, I'll just, you know, go and hammer it out. Yeah. I think when you really, and just like anything, right? When you really don't want to do it and you just do it, like better things happen when, versus if you want to go and do it. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Yeah. Like just doing it when you really don't want to. Yeah. But getting, and getting out of that rut though, I, I truly think it's okay. If, if doing like push ups, bicep curl, or your favorite exercise is, is it? Just go and do that. Just, just hit it up. Get the swell on, yeah. get the sweat going, and you, and then and then things will cascade again. Yeah, because yeah. it's almost starting then again. It's just starting that again. Momentum. Yes. To then do the next thing. Yes. Like yeah. I'll let you let you in on something. Like when I was recently at my most unfit, and I was back in corporate. Like I never do arms. 
Like you people, never do arms. Well, back in the day, people think like my arms are unproportional. Like I don't have big arms, but they're unproportionally big to my <laughs> body. Right? Just, sometimes I'm looking at my side view. I'm like, this looks ridiculous. But <laughs> you're yeah. looking at your side. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, like man, man, that's that's big, bro. Either <laughs> that or just do some calves. Like it's something. It's the worst. But but then it's Skip the reason like why it. my my my. That's why I do. I try to do legs twice a week now. But the reason why my arms grow the fastest is because when I was in junior high, high school, that's all you would do. Like the bro lifts, push ups, and arm curls, like everything you can see. Right. So to the point that even to this day, when I would come out of a rut and I would even do like push, um, you know, bench press or like pull ups, lat pulls, yeah. like instantly, like my arms just get puff real quick because it's just like mem- the memory that I've had over the years. Oh, interesting. It's weird. So and there's I, a muscle memory that's inbuilt to like, hey, yeah, I just did it. You've so done much. that before. You probably need this to be tons, stronger tons. and bigger, and then your body re- responds. To yes, that. interesting. But then what I did was to get me out of the rut was like I, I wasn't in like a gym mood. Yeah, and I'm like, you look, you know, I don't do arm. I don't have arm days anymore for a long time. But I'm like, it's hard right now. I'm just gonna do some arms, and I seriously got like a little pump on. I'm like, okay. And then that kind of snowballed yeah. back again, man. It's weird. Yeah. These little like little tricks that work. I mean, everyone's different. So pick your favorite muscle. Yeah. Just make it as barrierless as possible and just go do it. As barrierless as possible. Barrierless. Okay. Just go and yeah. do it somewhere where you're familiar with or comfortable and just hammer something out yeah. and just see where it takes you. Right. Don't yeah. let like the, the counter arguments in your head of why not yeah. to do it yeah. kind of start kicking just in. Just do it. Just do it. Interesting. Okay. Well, I mean, again, I want to respect your time. So, oh man, we'll start. we we always go on this. crazy I tangents. Love this. Man. Yeah, 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 I love this. Oh, um, man. I think just to to kind of close. Yeah. Um, there are a couple other things that I wanted to go through with you, yeah. but but maybe just a, if you can speak into your thoughts on just how COVID has affected your industry, mm. like say, and even just like fitness and and health in terms of. I guess for us, um, who want to stay hit fit and healthy, what are sort of the yeah. challenges that you see that need to be overcome? Yeah. Um, and what are maybe some things that could help? With yeah, you? that's a lot. I mean, it's it's been two years, and I mean, I think you know, being in Hong Kong is one thing, but I think a lot of rest of the world has has almost gotten over it, right? I think. But what I think what COVID has done for sure is I think people have prioritized health a lot more than ever. Mm. Um, like even from like a business standpoint, I think there's a lot of these like startup companies that do like health and wellness and fitness related things. Yeah. But I think as people going through this global pandemic, I think that um, people prioritize health now. Yeah. And they realize that taking care of yourself is actually very important. Yeah, and a lot of things that used to matter, or things that were built, or things that were like, you know, generating cash flow, all of a sudden stops out of your control. Yeah. But your health is actually in your control. A lot of things can come from that. So, I think that mindset has shifted, and then you combine that with the fact that everyone's at home. Um, is that fitness is digital now, like a lot mm. more than before, and home workouts um peloton for example or you have these um a lot of fitness celebrities and athletes investing in these like wall mounted workouts and things like that right um workout apps is everywhere um so i think digital fitness is definitely here to stay it's changed the game for a lot of people and i think that gyms have adapted yeah and if you haven't then think about it but i still think that fitness is really enjoyed in person Mm. So there's always that element that you that you got to keep going, but I mean, it, a, lo- a lot of it's online. Are there any examples of people that you feel like have adapted really well, or like like people or or companies people within com- people companies within the industry, and also maybe people that you know who I guess aren't trainers but have continued on like with their health and wellness journey in that yeah. regard. Well, a lot of people, like you go into someone's home now, and Hong Kong is limited space, right? Mm. But you, you go into someone's home now, like you, you'll probably see exercise equipment. Yeah. Like a lot of people I know now 
have a little thing built in, right? Yeah. Or if they have the luxury, they might like have like a decent home gym situation. Yeah. So people have been, I think everyone that I know has been making that making that shift. Yeah. And and you have, um, you know, I think you have some some gyms here. Actually, a lot of the smaller boutique gyms that are offering like a an online element too. Yeah. So they can like you know, um, have their have their clients want tune in from home. Yeah. But it's different though because Hong Kong is small. Right. So when you come into your own place, you might not have so much so you know much area like space to work out. Yeah. But you just got to find that little little space. I think a lot of people have made it, done a good job doing that. Yeah. And I guess <laughs> I guess now guys like you would start creating more content around I guess like opportunities for people to then have more yeah. fun. I guess as well. Yeah, I think in doing work. People like there's been there's been like a lot of online home workout channels have come about. Yeah. Right. Ever since the two years, and I, there's just so much there, and it, we'll see where I we'll see where I go from that aspect. I mean, I I like you know playing clips on Instagram for now, seeing what the feedback is. I might do something a little longer form. Yeah. But we'll see. I think there's there's always something um, to do and. Whether it, but like you said, whether it's video, yeah, or if audio affects people, or even like text-based help yeah. affects people or helps people, yeah, then then I'm all for it. Right. Yeah. Is there anything that I guess specifically that you're kind of hoping for in the year ahead or dreaming up in the year ahead that, whether it's professionally, personally, that yeah, you want to share? Like, I I do hope that everything just opens up soon i think that's everybody like i'm not yeah it's been it's been a long and fast two years but i don't know i've never been like i'm still i still feel very grateful for what i've been just blessed with and what i have mm. and being able to do what i do every day in my in our current situation like i'm i'm more than content yeah but I do think that opening up would be very nice. Yeah. So you can just, you know, just enjoy life again. Yeah. Um, but I think what I'm looking forward to is what when things open again, not taking for granted what was taken away. Yeah. And and ha- and building stuff upon that and right. continuing to help people in that new journey, new style, whatever it is. Yeah. I, I don't know exactly. Like we've talked about many times, like how will I implement health and wellness and fitness with across all channels yeah um or even different worlds like you know web three or crazy stuff like that yeah that's totally different but i don't know what it is but i think as long as i you know stick with the fact that okay grateful now happy with what i'm doing um it's helping people hopefully uh, and then things will get better yeah and if you can ride that wave of things getting better yeah. and everyone kind of going moving in the same direction altogether i think that that's what i'm looking forward to the most that's awesome bro yeah man wow <laughs> dude i've really enjoyed this conversation same. Um, we have a lot more to talk about yeah we definitely do but i crazy. think this is a great place to kind of end it if okay. anyone um maybe wants to work with you at any point yeah. or have have questions or just reach out to to connect with you where's the best place to find you yeah man i think right now just keep it simple on instagram okay so uh arns fit um and just message me how do you spell that a r n z Z, yeah z z z uh f i f i t same word one word nice um just hit me up and yeah we'll go from there awesome it's been a pleasure thanks brother good stuff